Hello, my name is David Ades. I offer affordable life coaching, and today I'm talking about bad habits, why we have them, and how we work to break them, so that over time, our ability to cope with the stressors of our external world and the stressors of our internal world, our ability to cope gets a little bit healthier. I want to put a pin in this. This is all we can ever hope for. It's all we will ever have, that our ability to cope gets healthier, not that our ability to cope goes away. Let's take some pressure and some shame or some guilt off of the idea that you have bad habits because you're coping with reality because you're too weak and you have to cope. You can't face reality for what it is. Bad habits are forms of coping. Good habits are forms of coping. Take the most superstar influencer you've ever seen post their daily routine. They wake up in the morning, they take a cold shower and a hot bath, and they have a masseuse give them a massage, and they eat 15 salads and go to the gym and meditate and read the Bible. Are they not coping with the stressors of reality? Are those habits not the things that keep them in the game? In the same way that if I have a bad habit of drinking, that's what keeps me in the game, the only difference is the objective effect it has on the organism that I am. Subjectively, they're serving the same purpose. I drink, it helps me stay in the game. I can function, I can tolerate reality because I've, you know, drank. <laughs> but same thing goes with the good habits. I've worked out, I've meditated, I've read the Bible, helps me stay in the game. Now I can tolerate the stresses of reality. If I didn't work out, if I didn't meditate, if I didn't read the Bible, if I didn't have a massage and a cold shower, I wouldn't be able to tolerate it, which is why I do those things. If I didn't need those things to tolerate reality, why would, I, why would I do them in the first place? So, take some pressure and shame or guilt off of you have bad habits because you're coping and you shouldn't cope. Kudos to you for coping with reality. It's pretty gosh darn hard. The problem is not addressing coping. The problem is addressing the reason certain people cope in certain ways and certain people are able to cope in other ways. It is a certain degree of free will, conscious integration of pain, healing and growth that would allow someone to choose what they cope with. I'm choosing to go to the gym. I'm choosing to meditate. I'm choosing to read the Bible or something like this. Instead of, I'm not choosing. I'm in so much pain or such. there's such negative emotional, emotional state. Like there's so much there's so many negative emotional states. You know what I'm trying to say? It's so strong that I have to. I have to reach for the drink because it's the easiest thing I can get my hands on. I don't have the free will. I don't have the resources of my own mind. I'm not at home enough in myself to say something like, okay, I'm stressed and I like to stretch and I'm good at meditating and I can go to the gym and I'm going to read the Bible. It's not like that. It's a more primitive state. I'm in pain. Give me something to relieve pain. So we are talking about pain. What drives us to uh, bad habits is pain that we can't sit with. Which is why uh, self-care is such a strange, elusive topic. <clears throat> because self-care is all about sitting with yourself, being with yourself, getting more in touch with yourself. So it's like instead of scrolling on your phone for three hours, eat a salad, read the Bible, and go to the gym, which are all forms, quite intense forms. I uh, would say, of being with yourself. But the reason that I scroll on my phone for three hours, or drink, or whatever, is because I'm not good at being with myself. I can't just use my willpower to overcome the thing that's within me, compelling me to not be with myself. I can't just use my willpower to overcome that, and not only quit the bad habit so that I'm with myself in a neutral state, but to intensify being with myself more by going to the gym or meditating or reading the Bible. But the whole problem is I can't be with myself. That's why I'm doing the bad habit, to destroy myself because I can't be with myself. I am an intolerable thing to be, which is why I go to bad habits. That's why they're self-destructive. That's why they're bad, because I'm intolerable. So let me drown it or let me stuff it with stuff that's not good for it. Let me destroy it. Let me pick it apart. Let me be too critical. Let me, because I can't tolerate. When I'm with myself, I'm too bored. I feel empty. I feel lonely. I feel upset. I feel irritated. I feel impatient. I feel depressed. I feel anxious. I can't be with myself. So let's get to, uh, let's get to like how to break uh, bad habits. 
the idea behind like all the self-care material, like instead of this, do this, it's correct because the idea is connect with yourself instead of disconnecting with yourself through the bad habit. That's another good way of separating bad habits and good habits. Bad habits disconnect you from yourself, disconnect you from your life, disconnect you from others, disconnect you from your feelings, disconnect you from your mind, disconnect because it's in pain or something. It's intolerable for some reason. And good habits help you connect with yourself because connecting with yourself is, is actually like a healing thing. Isn't that what therapy is all about? You, you go to therapy and it's time to connect with yourself. Talk about yourself. Share your thoughts, share your experience, share your memories. How do you feel? Connect with yourself. Let's attempt to make a connection with yourself because the idea is that connecting with yourself will help you resolve. It will help you resolve, but the difficulty is there's tension, which is why you're disconnecting in the first place. So in fact, when you go to connect with yourself, you will feel more than ever the tension that has been compelling you to disconnect with yourself. As you make a journey to connect with yourself, you will actually become more conscious of the pain or whatever intolerable thing that's been going on. You will become more conscious of how intolerable it is. This is what happens when you cut down on a bad habit. First and foremost, you're connecting with yourself. If I scroll on the phone for three hours and I say, okay, today I'm only going to scroll for two hours. That means I'm going to shut the phone off in two hours and I'm going to be with myself now. I've decided to disconnect from myself a little bit less, which means here I am connecting with myself a little bit more. So this is already a, an accomplishment. The goal of cutting down a bad habit is to cut down a bad, a bad habit because it connects you with yourself by virtue of not disconnecting you from yourself. You stop the bad habit. You've taken a step away from disconnecting from yourself. You've successfully connected with yourself. What you do there and what happens when you get there is, you know, up to uh, your own experience and up to what you've been through, but it's not about, like, covering it up with something else. Now that I stopped scrolling for three hours and I only scroll for two, I'm going to go to the gym for the next, for the remaining hour. It's not all about that because it isn't about covering up the thing that's been driving you to scramble to cope. Some people use the gym, a fantastic example, as a bad habit. They're addicted to it. They're addicted to burning themselves out, like beating themselves up at the gym. They're addicted to looking a certain way. They've got to be the most strong, fit, beautiful, comparing themselves with others. It doesn't matter what you do. It matters why or what place you're coming from when you engage in it. Some people gamble in moderation. Some people drink, smoke, eat, whatever in moderation. Those aren't bad habits. They might be self-destructive, but there's some room for that in our lives. And some people go to the gym and meditate and whatever, also compulsively. So those aren't uh, good habits. So the first step to uh, cutting down on a bad habit is just cutting down. Because getting back to the idea of connection, you're already doing that by cutting down on a bad habit. You're By hesitating, by stopping, by halting, by paying attention to your breath, you're trying to connect with yourself. Again, the problem here is that you're going to become more uh, conscious of the thing that's been compelling you to disconnect, but that's part of this process. Because in order to get to a deeper connection with yourself, you might have to move past that barrier of emotional resistance, that barrier of something intolerable that you would rather run from quite naturally because it's painful and we don't want to be in pain. So this is where support comes in. A life coach, a therapist, a friend, a group, uh, a family member, connecting with yourself. So if you're feeling tense, instead of disconnecting from yourself, you might listen to some good music because it actually stirs up some movement in you so you can connect with yourself. You might watch a good movie because it stirs up some movement in you and you connect with yourself. You might take a nap because it allows you to connect with yourself because you fall more deeply into yourself. Instead of disconnecting, connecting. It's not about disconnecting and stopping. It's not about disconnecting and pushing yourself for progress. It's just about uh, reaching for connection a little bit more. And this also has to do with connecting uh, with others. 
calling a friend or again joining a group or I don't know going for a walk and saying hi to a neighbor or it's all connection one of my favorite psychologists said that uh, connection is the antidote to addiction we engage in compulsive behaviors purposely because of a disconnect we have from ourselves or from our lives something is intolerable and we seek to run away from it the intolerableness forms that disconnect I cannot connect with myself if I'm in perpetual pain. I cannot connect with myself if I have a lot of unresolved trauma. The nature of it is that it disconnects me from myself. So this is quite a long and arduous journey of seeking a greater connection with something inside of us that gets stirred when the music comes on, that gets stirred when we see a good movie, that gets rest, hopefully, when we take a nap or go to bed, that wants our well-being that seeks to love and wants to be loved, that seeks support and wants to be support. And and it goes against your own defensive mechanism ego thing. Your ego just wants to feel great right now. If it's too intolerable to connect, then screw it. We're not going to connect. And there's something in you that wants to connect with you. And hopefully there are people around you that want to connect with you. And if not, there are people out there who would be willing to connect with you if they knew who you were, if you made the effort to connect with them, if you showed yourself a little bit more. Seeking connection even by just cutting down on the bad habit. Gaining connection by cutting down on the bad habit. That's the accomplishment. You gain connection when you cut down on a bad habit. What's there when you stop? Again, what do you do when you're there? You can chill. You can turn on some music. You can do nothing. You can just lay down, reflect on life, or take a look around, or You know, take it slow. You got to work with wherever you are. No pressure, no shame. Uh, One step at a time, one day at a time. If you resonate with this message, you can schedule a free 15 to 30 minute uh, session with me by clicking the first link in the description. Reach out to me through Instagram at Coach David Ades or through my Instagram. I already said that through my email, David at dying to live dot blog. Like this video if you do like it. Comment your thoughts down below, subscribe to see more, and I will talk to you soon.